In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up this REI Basecamp tent. This is the six person version, and I'm also going to show you how to take it down, pack it away, give you all the setup and pack away timings, plus four of my personal tips on how to do so. After unboxing this REI Basecamp, here's everything that I found in the box. First up, I got this black carry bag, and after taking everything out, like so, I also got this rainfly, this tent body, poles in a separate carry bag, plus stakes and guidelines in another smaller carry bag. Before we get to the setup, I just want to show you the number of poles that we're dealing with here. So after I took all the poles out of the carry bag, I got these five poles. Notice that only the ends of the poles are color-coded, the rest of the pole is just silver in color. Two of the poles are color-coded blue, and the next two poles will be color-coded black, and these poles are for the main tent body of the base camp. We will need this white pole last, and this is for the rainfly vestibule. And one of the poles, I think the last silver pole or white pole, came with this pole repair splint, just in case, which is really nice. Also, after I took all the stakes and guidelines out of the smaller carry bag, I counted 12 stakes in total, and I also got 4 of these red guidelines. And now we get to the part that you've been waiting for, how to set up this REI base cap. First, grab the tent body, lay it on the ground, and position it the way you prefer it to be. To do so, just look for the two doors on the tent, right here, and both these doors are exactly the same. Then look for the two blue pole sleeves, each running diagonally across the tent, like this, because we're going to need to set this up first. And now grab the two blue colored poles and insert these two poles through the two blue pole sleeves. And you might have noticed the tips of the poles will correspond to the color on the pole sleeves that you're in. I really love this, it's super user friendly. One not so great thing I notice here though is that these blue pole sleeves are a little bit long and the poles snagged on the pole sleeves quite a bit. So there was some running back and forth to undo the snagging to get the poles through. The first pole was fine and only snagged once, but my second pole snagged a whopping four times. So if you have this same problem, don't worry, just take your time to undo the snags. When you're done with both poles, you'll get this X shape at the top of the tent, like this. Before we prop these two poles up, and this is my first tip, I recommend staking down the four corners of the tent lightly because it really helps with putting up these two poles, especially if you're setting this up by yourself like what I'm doing here. There's this blue webbing at each corner of the tent that you can push your stakes through like this. Now go to the end of one of the blue poles at any corner of the tent and insert the tip of that pole into this grommet on the blue webbing right here like this. Then go to the other end of that same pole and prop the pole up using the pole sleeve. Using the pole sleeve is important and this is my second personal tip. You don't have to step onto the tent body like it did, but I recommend grabbing the pole sleeve towards the middle as much as possible so that you can prop it up as much as possible, which makes for a much easier setup. After that, feed as much pole as possible through the sleeve until you can bend down and secure the other end of that same pole into the grommet at the corner as well. Now the tent body is pretty much already propped up and securing the second blue pole is so much easier by just lifting the pole up a little bit and inserting the ends into the grommets one after the other, like so. At this point, and this is my third personal tip, I recommend zipping the two doors up and to do so before restaking the tent down so you won't have any issues zipping the doors up after staking it down. And of course, after that, restake the four corners of the tent down. Now it's time to break out the next two poles, which are these two black colored poles. Grab one of them first, go to either end of the tent, and for now, I'm going to choose the left side. Each side of the tent has a black pole sleeve, and this is where you're supposed to push each of your black poles into. One very important thing to take note of here is to insert the black pole under the blue pole, through this hole here. It should not be above the blue pole, like this. I found that the black pole sleeves are not snaggy at all because they're not as long, so it was really easy for me to sleeve the entire pole through without any snagging. After that, I just secured one end of the black pole first, and then the other end. 
To secure the pole, there's this black and white webbing at the bottom of the tent, and each end of the black pole goes into the grommet that's sewn onto the black webbing. So yes, it's still color-coded. And also, each black webbing is sewn to this white webbing with another grommet and a buckle as well, and I'll show you how this works a little later. For now, this is what the pole looks like completely set up. The end is secured to the grommet, the black pole goes under the blue pole, it goes through this black pole sleeve here, it goes under the other blue pole here, and the other end is also secured to the grommet in the black webbing on the other side. After that, do the exact same thing with the other pole, push it through the black pole sleeve on the right side of the tent and secure both ends of the pole. Now, there are these pole clips and buckles on each side of the tent and you gotta attach all of them to the black poles. Secure the front first and then go to the back and do the exact same thing. Here's a close-up shot. The pole clips latch onto the black poles really easily and I can even do it one-handed like so while holding the camera with my other hand. There are two pole clips here, another two pole clips here, and two big buckles right in the middle at this intersection. And each buckle is supposed to go over both black poles as best as you can. To recap, here's what the black poles look like when inserted into both black grommets. Here's what the pole clips and buckles look like. And remember to secure the black poles under the blue poles. Now it's time to grab the rain fly and we're gonna set this up. What I like to do is to just take one end of the ring fly and I raise it up over my head as much as possible against the tent body. And without letting go of that corner, I just walk around the tent and drag the entire ring fly along with me until the ring fly gets pulled up above the tent like so. Although I'm not very tall, I'm only about 5 foot 3 or 160 centimeters tall. This is my third personal tip on how I get almost all rain flies up above every tent on my own, not just this base cap. Moving along to secure the rain fly, there are two blue buckles and two black buckles on each side of the rain fly, so four buckles on each side and eight buckles altogether since there are two sides. The buckles on the ring fly are color coded as well. The blue buckles go into the other end of the buckle on the blue webbings and of course the black buckles go into the buckles of the black webbing. So that's how you know that your rain fly has been secured correctly. After that, I like to tighten all the buckles so that you're pretty snug and not too loose. To do so, just pull down on the ring fly webbing with one hand and use your other hand to pull on the webbing on the other side of the buckle. In contrast, if you want to loosen it, just pull on the buckle. Now look for the white pole sleeve on the ring fly, which is right here. One side of the ring fly will have it and the other side doesn't. Then grab the last white or silver pole and of course, sleeve it through the white pole sleeve because the color coding says to do so. I found the white pole sleeve a little bit long and a tad snaggy and I needed to run back and forth about two times to undo the snagging to get the pole through. So again, just take your time to undo the snags. To secure this white pole, the ends of the pole go into the grommet of the white webbings, which I promised to explain to you just now when I was fixing up the black poles. So this is basically where the white webbing comes in. This is the entire white pole set up, and here's the other white webbing at the other side of the tent. One really nice detail about this REI base cap is that there's white webbing attached to all the black webbing. So even if you put the rain fly on the other way around, you can still secure your white rain fly slash vestibule pole easily. You don't have to fret about where the front of the rain fly is or the back of the rain fly, which is really nice. Now I recommend using another four stakes to stake down the rest of the tent body here. What I usually do is to use the white webbing to stake the tent down. I don't use the black webbing here. I think the black webbing is for adjusting the buckle and not for staking the tent down. And now we're down to our last four stakes. Grab these, make sure your vestibules are zipped shut, and then use two stakes for each vestibule, like so. Each of your vestibules will come with two extra blue webbings here to be staked down. And again, remember to zip them up before staking them down. Now we're not done yet. It's time to unzip the vestibules and go inside. Because inside, we'll find Velcro tabs to secure to the poles of the base camp. The back of the base camp has two Velcro tabs for each pole, so four tabs altogether, like so. 
Here's what the Velcro tabs look like up close. They're red in color and you should be able to attach them easily to the poles like so. Once you're done securing the Velcro tabs at the back, zip up the back vestibule and head to the front of the tent. The front of the base camp has three Velcro tabs for each pole, so six tabs altogether. And here's a quick look at what they look like. Basically, they look the same. Now zip up the front vestibule and I recommend doing so before we dye out the tent. Now grab these red guidelines from REI and attach them to the tent. These black reflective loops are for attaching the guidelines and I've already done so by using a simple hitch. Weirdly enough, REI provided me with only four guidelines, so I just attached these four guidelines around the tent like so. But there were enough guy out points for six guidelines, three at one side here and three at another side here. So I wonder why they didn't give me at least six guidelines. And also, if you notice, we already used up all 12 of our stakes for the tent body, so I didn't even have any stakes left over for the guidelines. So I had to dig out another four more stakes that I had lying around at home, just so I could guy out my tent. And now here's a full time lapse of me setting up the entire REI Basecamp 6 on my own with no help from anyone else. But before I let you know how long this entire setup took me, if you found this setup video and my tips helpful, it would mean so much if you could help me hit that like button. Thank you and I really appreciate it. Moving on, the entire setup process, including staking and guying out the entire tent, took me about 17 and a half minutes. But I've set up and taken my base camp down at least half a dozen times, so just take note that on your first go setting up this tent, you'll take a little longer, maybe 20 plus minutes or so. For the takedown and pack away of this REI base camp 6, the first thing I would recommend to do is to undo the 12 Velcro tabs. There were a couple of times that I forgot to do so and it kind of slowed down my entire pack away. And also, I noticed that the white pole sleeve was pretty annoying and it snagged quite a few times so I had to walk back and forth to undo the many, many snags. But all the other pole sleeves were pretty much not snagged at all during the takedown. Even the long blue pole sleeves snagged on me at most once, sometimes not at all, so taking down this base camp tent isn't too difficult. Altogether, it took me about 15 minutes for the entire takedown and pack away. As for the tent body, I usually fold it in half one, two, and three times. After that, I roll it up and then stuff it back into the carry bag. Then I pack up the rainfly by just folding it in half continuously while tucking all the guy lines in nicely until it gets small enough to be squished back into the carry bag as well. And of course, all the poles and the stakes go back into their separate bags before going back into the outermost carry bag. The fourth tip I have for you here is to pack everything up separately, like what I just showed you. On the other hand, when I tried to roll everything up together and then stuff it back into the carry bag, it just took so long to try and get everything back in. That's because for such an expensive tent, I think the carry bag kind of sucks. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in this full review right here, where I go through every single thing you need to know about this REI Basecamp 6, like spaciousness, features, rain test, and loads more. Thank you for watching this setup video, and I'll see you in the next one.